there's so many layers of innovation. Like part of me is like, man, is this, can they actually take this from the lab to a car this quickly? Um, Cause it seems like it's not ready to be in a car yet. And I don't know, that's kind of like one thing I've grappled with a lot. It's like, are Drew and Elon too confident about commercializing this or are they downplaying how fast they're going to commercialize it because they don't want an Osborne effect? I think it's, um, they gave the, the most accurate assessment they could possibly give. I don't think they're sandbagging it and I don't think they're overhyping it based on what they've said. And that was a key thing that I think was missed in the presentation that uh, Drew said that they produced thousands of kilometers of material. That was significant for me because I was looking at Maxwell's material from 2012 and they were struggling to produce, you know, two to 300, th two to 300 meters of material uh, without running into an issue. But if they can wow. produce, you know, thousands of kilometers without running into an issue, yeah, I even if the yield rate is low, if your cells are 50% the cost of anybody else's, that gives you a lot of um, room to play with. And it's also, Elon said that they have a clear path to uh, the solution and, and a, a finished product. They just need to work through the iterations. This is exactly what we're seeing with Starship out um, out in the field in Texas where they go, all right, this is SN7, SN8, and they have versions up to SN50. And because you can't change, you don't want to change too many things at once. You want to methodically work through each change and uh, implement them so you can see exactly what it affects. Uh, and that's exactly what I think they're doing. Let's try this next. The next thing is this, and then we'll get to something. And I think there is a clear path to having a, a production machine next year. Wow. And would you, would you, is anyone on your radar doing something similar to this? Because it seems so radically like, you know, is there another battery startup that's coming in to try and outcompete Panasonic? Is there, is there anyone else? Cause I know you follow a lot of this battery, even in academia. Like I'm wondering what the closest thing to this is. Once again, they showed us so much at battery day. It's, you'd have to look at the, the individual projects that they're working on, but I've seen every project, everything that they showed in battery day. Uh, there is examples in academia of what they've done. However, there's a big leap from the lab to actually get it to, yeah. get it to production Tesla scale. Yeah, and Tesla seems to be the one to actually do the leap. So that's what I'm, that's where I'm, I guess the crux of my question is, is like, is it too good to be true that that leap's going to happen? Because that's, you know, like Panasonic's been doing this for 30 years and in 10 years, Tesla's like, okay, we learned how to do it like you and we, we're going to reinvent all that and do it better. And we're actually not even going to do that just on paper like everyone else does, but we're actually going to put it in 10 times as many cars as you put your old tech into. And so yeah. I'm like, okay, and you're planning to scale 100 gigawatt hours in 2022. I cannot find anybody talking about this stat, but it's the only stat from Battery Day that I really care about. How fast are you going to scale the production of these 4680s, right? And they say 100 gigawatt hours. Like, like that's triple what they have. You got to verify my math on that. That's triple what they have today with 500,000 cars. I mean, this is an – like – this is so far beyond a uh, pilot plan at that level. Yeah, it's huge. It, it's far beyond my estimates. And it, one question that I would have for Elon and Drew is when you said 100 gigawatt hours, were you saying that you're going to produce 100 cells a year? You're going to install 100 gigawatt hours of capacity? Or uh, by the end of the year, you want to hit 100 gigawatt hour run rate? Because That one, when... <laughs> third one, is my guess. Yeah, because otherwise it's like, there's no way. There's no way they could do 100 in 2022 that are going into cars. That's just... Yeah. Where did they get all the materials for that? That's my thing. It's like, not only how are you going to... They, they clearly have the machine to do that now, but where are they going to get all, all the materials? Is, is that the limiting factor? At my, in my view, that is the limiting factor at this point, is uh, you have this beast of a machine. How, because, for instance, every one of these machines, these dry battery electric machines, if they're producing uh, 20 gigawatt hours of cells a year, you're going to have to dump a semi-load of material into that, into that machine every single day. One entire semi-load of material... <laughs> into this tiny little machine every single day. <laughs> it's just, it's ridiculous. So yeah, uh, the raw materials, I think that's, that's going to start to be a bottleneck in the next three to four years. And I think that's why Tesla's getting into it earlier than I even thought, because I thought yeah. maybe eventually they would get into it. But uh, if you're going to be targeting 100 gigawatt hours a year in 2022, you have to start lining up material because there's going to be a shortage between like 2023 and 2025.